So um, today's theme is one that I really enjoy. And I have to confess, it's a theme that started with a lot of aversion. And uh, when I was, so I was born in Hartford, Connecticut. And um, when I was two, we moved to Mexico. And from there, we moved to Argentina, where I lived for five years outside of uh, Buenos Aires. Uh, some, of pe some people might say Buenos Aires, which makes me cringe when they say it that way. <laughs> Buenos Aires. And uh, <clears throat> so I lived there for five years. And then uh, after a short stint in uh, Ohio for a year and then West Virginia, I uh, grew up the rest of my time in California. And um, so uh, many of those places are warm weather places. And I did live in New York City for 10 years. Um, and uh, of course, that was cold and such. But uh, being in Boston, you know, moving, then I was in California for another six years in the Bay Area and then in Santa Barbara, which is a lovely place in the oh, winter. Yeah. Uh, but the point being, so they, they may know this story already, and it's something that every year um, I really enjoy talking about. So when I began talking about aversion, my great aversion to the, the, the profound cold, the short days, um, really, really, it has been an issue for me to adjust to that. Now, one of the things that made an enormous difference for me was when my teacher, Leslie, <clears throat> uh, gave a talk once about, about something she called reveling in the inner light, reveling in, in the inner luminosity of the mind during the winter when the days are short and it's cold and the opportunity we have <clears throat> hopefully to slow down the days are shorter and in the darkness to cultivate uh, this quality of brightness that is internal and really hold that in and um, that made a difference that was helpful the other thing that helped was to begin mirroring in a way <clears throat> the deeper process of the natural world right around now at this point of the year when nature up in the northern hemisphere in these northern climates where it's cold nature is at its stillest there's very little activity um, last week we had snow and i was thinking oh good I, I if for no other reason i hope the snow hangs on for tonight so we can have this conversation well it's all melted now but at least down here, down here in Boston. Um, <laughs> you there too, Andrea, huh? Okay. Um, anyway, the point is the same, that this time of year, what the Native Americans called the hunger season, because there was very little food to eat. There was naturally in the eastern woodland Indians and also in the plains, the native uh, plains in um, the Midwest, was this intentional quieting. There was very little activity in the villages, in a way mirroring the natural world. And part of that was intentionally done um, because there was very little to eat. There was very little energy and it was really about just sort of getting through the winter. Um, looking at it from a spiritual standpoint, looking at what the earth is doing, that it's going into a state of dormancy. What is going into dormancy? The vitality, the life principle, creation, the, the brimming of the natural world when it is in full bloom is now in potentiality. It's in the form of potential. It's the seed form, but it is going internal and it is regenerating in the process in the same way that bears hibernate. There are many animals that are hibernating, the ones that don't migrate. And so you have this natural process of stilling, of quieting, of going internal, hibernation, if you will. Now, wouldn't that be great to have a holiday of peace every year right now to mirror the natural world, to mirror the process of stillness and say, hey, instead of continuing to churn out all the work we do in the winter and overproduce and have all these deadlines and stress, which is 
goes entirely against the climate that we're in up here, right? Now, if you're in the southern hemisphere, I know Natalie, you're in Brazil, right? So <laughs> you're in you're in summertime now. So this could easily be reverted depending on the hemisphere that you're in. But nonetheless, um, I think the principle is the same. In Argentina, we we had winters. This wasn't to say this was a terribly hot climate in uh, in July when it was winter. Yeah. I used to have this thing called the Paso Montañas. <laughs> I put it over my head to keep everything warm. It's basically, it's like a, uh, what do you call it, like a ski mask. Um, so <clears throat> I began to really value the short days for this reason. And I think being a teacher, is it's helpful because, you know, I get these few weeks in January <clears throat> off from having to go to campus. Now, the last couple of years, it's been pretty much at home anyway, teaching. And I think there is a difference between kind of the isolation, the, what, we, what do we call that, kind of the isolating at home during the last two years, almost two years of pandemic, which comes with its own challenges. And I certainly have felt them too. Um, difference between that and actually intense, uh, intentionally cultivating a refuge, a space of cultivation where we almost, re as, as my teacher Leslie said, revel in the inner light, yeah, reveling in that inner luminosity. So this is a good time to be aware of this. If you're like me and you suffer when you haven't had a lot of sunlight, <laughs> um, this is important. It really can help. It can make a difference. So I'm going in uh, to a week retreat beginning tomorrow, uh, and I'll be doing a lot of this work and as well as other things. But um, wouldn't it be cool to have a holiday right about now? A holiday for peace. 